Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 63. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter 8 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're still in chapter 8 and 9 doing linear programming with Excel Solver. And this is our last example. We have Gel Boomerang's manufacturer trying to decide between four projects. And Gel Boomerangs has limited resources for the next four years. Now, here are, is our criteria for choosing a project, net present value. Now, that topic is for a finance class. And if you look at YouTube, I have lots of a whole class on finance. But the idea here is boom, 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 boom. They're all positive net present value, so we'd like to take them all. But here's the constraint. Year one to four, the capital requirements for this project, capital requirements for this project, and so on. But guess what? We also have some constraints for each year. Year one to four, we're limited to 40, 50, 40, and 35,000 for capital available. So we're going to learn about a new type of variable, not continuous or integer like we did before, but binary, 1 or 0. Now, in all of our prereq classes, we've talked about true and false and ones and zeros and Boolean and binary. Here, it's going to be the same. 1 is true, 0 is false. So I'm going to define a binary variable for one, two, three, four projects. Gel Boomerang manufactures boomerangs, right? So a new CNC router machine. That would be a potential project that we'd like to take on. A new delivery van, a research project, and new paint room equipment. So we're going to designate each one of these. This will be C for CNC router, tab, V for new van, tab, R for new research project. P for new painting project. Now this is a binary, so it's going to be 0 and 1. I'm going to start out with dummy data and put a 1. So 1, Control, Enter. That means if we were to multiply 1 times each one of these values here, we would be taking all of the values. If in our linear programming Excel solver, one of them or more than one of them comes out 0, it means we're not going to take that project. All right, so we're going to start out with 1. Well, that leads to the objective function. And the math function is simple. We take the amount of the particular project times the binary variable 1 or 0. Notice it's like an on-off switch, because it's when it's 1, we'll multiply it and then add it to the rest. So we'll actually get the amount. If it's 0, it's like off. That'll become 0, so we're not taking that project. So we do that for each one of the variables, amount times the binary variable, amount, binary variable, and so on. So to do that as our objective function, sounds like a perfect job for the sum product. Multiply corresponding elements and then add equals sum product. Array 1, one row by four columns, comma, array 2, one row by four columns close parentheses and control enter. To show you how this works, if I change this to a 0, instantly our objective function updates. Now you could prove this to yourself. You could highlight these two values, hold control and then highlight that value, come down to the status bar and you can see we get 157,000 just like our objective function. Now down to our constraints and I'm going to delete these. These shouldn't be here. Our Constraints for each one of them is going to be similar to our objective function. Hey, the amount for first project, project C in year one, times the binary variable. Amount from project V in year one times the binary variable, and so on. The binary variable is an on-off switch. Now, if we were to simply add these up and they're all one, it would be exactly the same. But as soon as we change it to 0, then, for example, project R, all of these would become 0 in our constraint function. All right, so I'm going to click in the top cell equals sum product, because yes, indeed, we're multiplying four cells to the left, arranged with one row by four columns, comma, 
This range is one row by four columns, but we better lock it. F4 key to lock it, because when we copy down, we need to be locked on our decision variable, that binary variable. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and copy it down. Now we're ready to go. We can go up to our objective function cell, data, solver. Our set objective, that's our objective function. We definitely want to maximize by changing these awesome binary variables. All 111 right now, but we'll see what it changes to. Make unconstrained variables non-negative. Simplex LP, those are the settings we've been using all along. Let's click Add. Now, this is convenient here. All of our constraint functions and all of the right-hand side constraints have exactly the same comparative operator. So we can enter as an array constraint functions, boom, less than or equal to, boom. Constraint, right-hand side as an array. Click Add. We have a very important variable to define. Our next constraint will be decision variables. Guess what? You have to be binary, 1 or 0. Now I can click Add. Now I can click Cancel. There is my entire setup. Objective function, decision variables, constraints. Click Solve. Solver found a solution. I click OK. And uh-oh, our new paint room equipment doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that one at this time. But project C, V, and R, CNC router, new van, and research, we can do those. We can see that the value here reflects that we're only taking these projects. Similarly, down here, if we were to add up these, remember our trick, we highlight, look down in the status bar, 27,000. Boom, there it is. All right, so in this video, we saw how to use a binary variable, linear programming, Excel solver for a limited resource problem. All right, that's it for chapter 8 and 9. We'll see you next video.